Ever tried to build a Mac multi-launch coaster in Panic Coaster? I did, and let me tell you, it was not an easy task. However, I managed to fit a Mac multi-launch coaster with a track length of over 1000 meters in the limited space left in my new park. In this episode, I will cover the basics of the Mac multi-launch layout, some custom supporting of the track, and a glimpse of how I put together the station and the queue area. Stick around and enjoy the construction of this badass roller coaster. This is the space left to work with in the park. In the top left corner is where the new coaster will be located. Down here, there will be another plaza with some flat rides and food facilities. And to the left is where the track ride will be built in a future episode. I start by elevating the station so that I can fit the exit, some toilets and shops underneath. As always, when building a modern steel coaster, I start by placing down the transfer track for maximum capacity during busy days in the park. Make sure to place the transfer track next to a road for easy access during construction and maintenance. The easiest way to do this is to build the track pieces at the end of the coaster layout. When you are happy with the transfer track, delete the surplus parts and continue the coaster itself. After this, I also reserve some space for the queue area, where there can be no coaster track. Make sure to make the launch section long enough for the train to gain momentum. Don't worry about the speed, that can be adjusted once the layout of the track is complete. The first inversion will be kind of an Immelman loop. This is also the tallest part of the coaster, since these types of roller coasters tend to stay relatively close to the ground. I smooth the track by collecting two 6 meter pieces. Click smooth all a few times and then go back or forth with the next pair of 6 meter pieces. I then continue to plan the layout using tight bends and overbanked curves. I of course also add a couple more inversions, in this case a 0G roll and two corkscrews. Since the pre-made terrain had bodies of water, I really struggled with this part of the track just before entering the second launch section. My goal was to use the terrain at its maximum with the coaster well integrated and the track passing itself multiple times during the duration of the ride, increasing the excitement with near misses and tight curves. Here's the complete layout from a bird's eye view. After using the smoothing method two pieces at a time, I then collect two 6 meter pieces again, delete them and click autocomplete. This method is what I use to create realistic looking coasters in Planet Coaster. However, I have to admit that the Mac launch coaster in this game is not easy to get smooth compared to other coaster types.
For the queue, I went with a simple cattle pen design, using all the available space between the station, the transfer track and the coaster itself. Enable Priority Queue, simply go to the right menu, click Operation and scroll down to the bottom and select Enable Priority Pass. Then place the entrance and the exit somewhere along the already existing queue. I will now fast forward the building process. When building custom supports, do yourself a favor and create a blueprint and copy this support to be able to use it multiple times. Don't worry if the pre-made support do not fit everywhere, you can easily adjust it so that it fits the layout and its new location. Lastly, before I show you the final result, the coaster needs its name. A few weeks back I asked you guys for name suggestions for my BNM invert. I received some really good ones, one of which suits perfectly for this new Mac launch coaster. The name is Mythos. It's Greek and means myth in English. A huge thank you to Juan Iniesta. And now, without further ado, enjoy Mythos.
Thank you for sticking around until the end. Take care.